Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the six pieces of equipment that you will need to record and mix music in a home studio. Now, the good news is that with modern day digital recording, your ability to record and mix music at home is more accessible than ever. And so in this video, we'll talk about what equipment you will need to do that. Before we jump in, I've got three free guides for you, a free EQ cheat sheet, a free compression cheat sheet, and a free vocal recording guide. And you can get those at mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. Okay, so item number one on the list of things that you'll need to record and mix music at home will be a computer. Now, I'm sure that the vast majority of you already own one, and you might be thinking, is this computer good enough to record and mix music on? Well, in recent years, computers have become increasingly powerful. And so there's a very, very good chance that the computer that you own will already be good enough to start recording and mixing music on. To find out if it is gonna be good enough, all you need to do is check the minimum requirements of different types of software and hardware, and we'll talk about both of those in a moment, against your computer's spec to see if the computer that you already own will be able to handle the hardware and the software efficiently. If it can't, before you go out and buy a new computer, I would highly recommend having a look into whether or not you can upgrade the RAM in your computer or swap the hard drive for a solid state drive to improve your computer's performance a bit. So before you go out and spend lots of money on a new computer, it's likely that you can probably make a few tweaks to your current one to get it suitable for music production. The second thing that you're gonna need is what's known as a DAW. That stands for Digital Audio Workstation. And so that's the software that you will use to record and mix your music. Now there are loads of different DAWs out there, I would recommend that you start with a free one. So if you're a Mac user, you can use GarageBand. That's already on your Mac when you buy it. If you're a Mac or a PC user, you can download Pro Tools Intro, and that's a free version of Pro Tools that you can get started with. And then if you find that you like Pro Tools and you maybe want a version with a few more capabilities, then as far as I'm aware, all of the Pro Tools software now, you pay for monthly rather than buying it outright. So that can be an affordable way of getting into a, a slightly more fully fledged door quite cheaply to begin with. There's a program called Reaper, which is really good. And you can get a 60 day free trial with that. And then it's quite affordable afterwards. And at the minute, even Logic Pro is offering a 90 day free trial. So Logic only works with Mac, but if you're a Mac user, you can get a fully fledged door try it for 90 days, and then invest in it afterwards if you like it. So I would recommend trying some free versions. Perhaps you'll find that you need to upgrade to a paid version if you want slightly more capabilities than the free version offers you. But quite often, the free versions are really good. And so sometimes you might find that even the free version is adequate for what you do, and you might never need to buy a paid version. The third thing that you're gonna need in your home studio is what's known as an audio interface. So an audio interface is the piece of equipment that takes signals from your microphones into your computer. And then it also then sends your mix out of your computer to your headphones or your monitor speakers. Now, audio interfaces come in all different sizes and at all different price points. Some will offer you maybe just two inputs and two outputs. Others will offer you usually up to eight inputs and eight outputs. And some of those have the option to expand further so you can link multiple hardware units together to go up to 16 inputs, 24 inputs, 40 inputs, and so on. And so how many inputs and outputs you're gonna need depends on what kind of music you're recording. If you wanna record a band and you wanna do it live, you're gonna need at least eight inputs, if not more, so that you have inputs for each of the different microphones. If you want to record a drum kit, you're probably also going to need at least eight inputs, if not more. Whereas if you're recording maybe just acoustic guitar and vocals, then a two input, two output audio interface will probably be absolutely fine for you. Now, when you're choosing an audio interface and a door, make sure that the two are compatible. Compatibility is generally pretty good nowadays, but it's always worth double checking. It's also worth double checking that your audio interface's connections are suitable for your computer. So whether the interface is USB or Firewire or Thunderbolt or so on, make sure that your computer can work with that. And it's also worth noting that a lot of interfaces will often come with a door bundled in. So sometimes you can buy the door and the audio interface as one package. Item number four that you're gonna need is a microphone. And there are also a few other little bits that need to go with your microphone that we'll talk about. But I'm classing this as just one item because quite often you can buy a bundle or a pack which will contain everything you need. 
So choosing a microphone can be a little bit of a confusing part of this process. Um, it might seem like there are endless types of microphones. There's condenser mics, ribbon mics, dynamic mics. Uh, some of them have small diaphragms, some have large diaphragms. And then there are different pickup patterns, cardioid, omnidirectional, figure of eight, and so on. So where do you start? Well, if you're only going to have one microphone in your home studio, you should buy a large diaphragm cardioid condenser microphone. Why is that? Well, that is the best all-rounder for recording vocals, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, pianos. You could even do a one mic recording of a whole drum kit with that microphone. So I'd recommend that the microphone that you invest in is a large diaphragm cardioid condenser. Now, because it's a condenser microphone, it will require something called phantom power. And I've done a video on that before, so I'll leave a link to that on screen. So make sure that the audio interface that you choose is one that can provide phantom power. Most of them do, but it's just worth double checking. Now to go with your microphone, you're also going to need a pop shield if you're gonna be recording vocals, and a microphone stand and an XLR cable. The reason that I'm not counting those as separate items is that there are loads of online stores that will sell you all of those things as a bundle in a sort of discounted package. So have a look out for packages that provide a large diaphragm cardioid condenser, an XLR, a pop shield, and a mic stand. If not, buy each of those four things separately so that you can use your microphone. The fifth piece of equipment that you're gonna need is a pair of headphones. Now you're gonna need these to wear whilst you're recording. So if you're recording vocals, you wanna be able to hear the guide track or the guitar track that you've already laid down or whatever it is that you're playing to. Or if you're recording drums, you would want the headphones so that you can listen to the click track or the guide track. Or if you're doing live recordings, you wanna be able to hear the rest of the band through your headphones. And of course, you can also use your headphones to do some mixing as well. Now, generally speaking, there are two different kinds of headphones that you can get. You can get open back headphones and closed back headphones. Closed back headphones offer better isolation, so they minimize the risk of your monitor mix spilling out onto your microphone, and they're ideal for recording with. Open back headphones generally give you slightly better sound quality uh, but the isolation isn't as good. So if you were buying headphones just to mix on, I would probably go for open back headphones. But if you want a pair of headphones that you're gonna be recording with, I would go for closed back headphones. And the final item that you're gonna need in your home studio is a pair of monitor speakers. So you're gonna want a pair of monitor speakers that are specifically designed for music production. The reason being that they will provide a flat frequency response. So they're designed to give you an accurate representation of the recording or of the mix. Now you could ask, well, can I not just use the headphones that I'm buying to mix? Yes, to some extent you can. I really, really like mixing on headphones and I know a lot of people who do, but I really, really like to have a pair of monitors to at least double check things on. I like to double check the frequency response on a pair of speakers. I like to double check the stereo image on a pair of speakers. I made a video about that last week and I'll leave a link to that on screen as to why I think that's beneficial. Now, if you can't afford to buy a pair of headphones and a pair of monitor speakers, that's absolutely understandable. And in that case, I would recommend that you just get the headphones and you start mixing, you start making music. Don't wait until you've got all the gear before you start doing any of this stuff. But in an ideal world, at some point down the line, I would recommend that you also invest in a pair of monitor speakers. And that way you can get two different perspectives. You can make sure that the music sounds good on speakers for people who are gonna be listening to your music on speakers after you've released it. And you can make sure that your music sounds good on headphones for people who are gonna be listening to your music on headphones once you've released it. And having both allows you to get a balance between the two and make a mix that translates well between both. So these are the six items that you need for your home studio. A computer, digital audio workstation, an audio interface, a microphone along with a mic stand, an XLR and a pop shield, a pair of headphones, and ideally a pair of monitors as well. And the great thing is that with modern day digital recording, most of these things can be purchased to suit just about any budget. So you can invest in high end stuff if you have the budget for it. If not, put together the rig that you can afford and start making music. Don't wait until you've got better equipment or you can afford a really high-end microphone or a really high-end pair of speakers or something like that before you get started. Work with what you can afford, get started straight away. I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel for future videos. Don't forget to head over to mixinglessons.com free downloads and download a free EQ cheat sheet 
your free compression cheat sheet and your free vocal recording guide, and I'll see you next time.